tomatillos. Look at this. Fantastic ingredient for salsa. They're related to Cape gooseberries, Fusilis family. Nothing like as sweet as a Cape gooseberry or a golden lantern. They develop in these skins. Uh, these were, I sowed them in late March, even middle of March, about the same time as tomatoes. They made quite big plants by early May. These were transplanted on the 3rd of May. We put fleece over actually to bring them on a bit. They're a warmth loving plant, but they're not like an aubergine. They'll grow in semi warm conditions. This is zone eight. It's a mild temperate climate. They're doing all right. We've got a long period of picking ahead, but how do you know when they're ready? And down here at the bottom of the plant is where you're gonna most likely find ones that are ready, but if they're not ready, <laughs> that's what they're like. So that's a, a young one that has still to grow because when they're, when they're ready and good to eat, they'll be fully swollen inside this lantern. And here I've got a few, it's very interesting actually because these plants are all from the same seed packet, de milpa. It's a really good variety of tomatillo. And this one, for some reason, is completely different. And actually it's ready earlier, the slightly smaller. And there's already one which I can show you. So you can see it's fully, fully grown inside the, the, the lantern, which is also starting to go a bit pale and will eventually decay. That, they'll burst out of it and sometimes they even split actually. So that's a sign of readiness. You can get a lot. And then, well, what do you do with them? Actually, I'll tell you what I'll quickly do as well to show you. They, at this point, they, they're getting seeds in there. And if you didn't pick them and left them for quite a long time, the fruit will rot and then the seeds come out and they can become quite a weed. <laughs> so be wary of that. And it can become quite a hunt to find the right ones. So we're actually going to make a dish for you just to give you an idea of how to prepare them. <clears throat> and lo and behold, we have onions coming ready. So these are multi-sown onions, sown February, transplanted in March, and we actually pushed the tops over of those this morning. They're starting to ripen. And also because they got parsnips sown between, we'll harvest those ones quite soon. And here we have some red onions, also multi-sown. And they also are coming ready. They're looking really nice, actually. Very happy with that. So I'll put one of these. These are good to eat at this stage. But also if you bend the tops over, that helps to firm, uh, dry the neck a bit and they'll store for longer. And then I'm gonna go down to the greenhouse and we'll just have a quick look at tomatoes, another nice ingredient for us also. I'm in the greenhouse and I've come in for tomatoes. Oh, what do I find? I've forgotten. We've got the chilies here actually as well. Fantastic ingredient also for salsa. This is Anaheim. So again, that was sown in March. Uh, it's been growing in a small pot and then we put it in a big pot <laughs> and that's going to be really nice in the mix. Then we've got all different types of tomato. You can put any of these in, even these cherry tomatoes. That's like sungul here. They're cropping really well in cool conditions. It's not a hot summer at the moment, uh, but we've been picking loads. And that'll bring a nice bit of orange color. Then we have Gardener's Delight here, the red ones. So I'll just grab a couple of them. And as we move up here, we come to the gorgeous Burner Rose. This is one of my favorites. I mean, look how well it's cropping already. It's the first beef tomato to ripen. And actually there's a classic sign that it's right there, which is that little split. They do tend to split from, uh, it's not really incorrect watering. It's more just a, a feature. But it's a nice one. You know, it means it's beautifully ripe and top flavor. I'll pick a couple here. And they, you know, they don't actually look that right, but it's a pink variety. So the name Berner Rose, that means pink from Bern in Switzerland. And then here we've got even these gorgeous cherry plum. These are top flavor. These will be really nice uh, in the dish. That's a variety called Rosada, which uh, I sowed actually 10 years ago because it, you can't get the seed anymore. It's F1 hybrid. So we just keep it alive from a side shoot. And there's a few more gardeners tonight here I can pick. And we've pretty much got it all now for preparing the dish. Let's go to the kitchen and see what we can make. So Nicola has been doing some preparation here and we've been doing some research. What's a good way to cook, prepare these tomatillos to get some nice flavors. And I'm going to start actually by tasting a little bit raw because I can describe to you then 
the flavour, which is nothing to write home about, it must be said, <laughs> I don't think. I did a raw testing actually at an event I was at once and in London and the feedback I got mainly was, oh, this tastes like raw potato. <laughs> so, yeah, nothing too exciting, but it's a fantastic base for doing other things with. So, here we have to make salsa verde, green salsa. Uh, the tomatillos, we've taken off the outer sheath and there's around 400 grams there of tomatillo, maybe a little bit more. Uh, they're going to be boiled for three minutes to soften them, um, take a bit of the edge off the flavour and then blended, but that's the only bit that's blended. This bit will then be added, which is some chopped up red onion, which Nicola has soaked in lime. That really, um, it takes the pungency out of it and makes it a really soft flavour with a bit of chilli and garlic as well. So that will all be blended together, but the, sorry, mixed together after that has been blended. And this one is a, a red salsa, <laughs> a cut, more cooked, uh, roasted. So all, everything in the pan is going to be roasted. Uh, again, roughly 400 grams, tomatillos chopped in half, as you can see, little bits of garlic there. And these beautiful Berna Rose tomatoes, 25 minutes in the oven at 200 degrees centigrade, which will then be blended. And again, that's the only bit that will be blended. This will then be added, the same um, concoction of onion soaked in lime juice, with a bit of garlic and chili, uh, the Anaheim chili. And also Nicola thought it'd be nice to give it more texture to chop up some of the Sun Golden Gardener's Delight tomatoes. So let's leave her to do that and then we'll meet up again in the garden where we'll have a tasting. So just walking up the path here to have this tasting. It reminds me how much these plants spread out. They are incredible how they sprawl, how vigorous they are. And we did try and stake them at the beginning. Well, it looked very neat actually for a while, main stem tied to a stick in each case. But before you know it, they, they do this. Just do bear that in mind. And it, it means I was harvesting some again this morning and uh, you know, you just keep finding them. I just found one on the path. Uh, so you will get loads of harvest from tomatillas. And that's where it's handy to have a few recipes up your sleeve and tasting this one now it's got the pleasing appearance with the little bits of white onion the seeds look how many tomatillo seeds are there and this is from the garden's point of view this is something to watch out for they will self-seed if you don't harvest every single one mm. this Beautiful, beautiful scrunch. For me, not too hot. Obviously you can vary the chili. N Nicola will post the recipes for these dishes in the video description, so you can check out the details. But the amount of chili is something I think is very personal. And um, that one with the a smooth, creamy texture, that, thanks to the tomatillos, you know, all the, obviously all the texture there, the sort of background smoothness of it is, is these fruits. Uh, and then you've got the scrunch of the onion and garlic, and little bits of um, little bits of tom tomatillo skin as well. Whereas here we, because Nicola put in the, the actual tomato pieces uncooked. So we got a bit like a tomato and tomatillo soup and with the pleasing garlic and onion. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this should be copyrighted recipe because that's the, the ultimate condiment for me. It's It's got loads of flavour and a little bit of bite, pleasing sweetness. You could almost eat it as a soup actually, but it's, it's quite strong flavour. So both of these dishes will go a long way. I urge you to have a go. Grow them and eat them. They're wonderful. <laughs>